are the connection, the pendant, the cable that connects to the pendant pin on the center board and is bent. The wire is corroded and uh, I, you can tell that it's in a point where it could fail. Now, the reason I have it tied up is because we're gonna run a new wire and I haven't decided if I'm gonna be using wire or Dyneema to create that line that lifts um, the center board. But for those that were curious about what the center board looks like, here's our center board. This is a center board for a Pearson 34 for rubbery. It is roughly uh, about 21 inches wide on the center, so it's pretty substantial. Guys, I apologize for the shaking, but I'm um, doing this with one hand today. So here is the attachment for the uh, center board. It's two steel plates. They get positioned on both sides, one on top, one on the bottom. And there are three stainless steel bolts that go through and screw in place to keep the, the attachment in place. The two boards, uh, the wire for the pendant uh, goes through this pin. So you basically have the, the pin going through, the wire goes in here. So you have the, the pin, the, the metal plate goes through the pin. You have the wire, so the Dyneema or the wire that you're gonna use to control the center board. And then this goes on the other side, you know, it's all attached. So you're gonna have that sandwich in between. And then you put a pin um, through to keep everything together. Now the center board gets attached through the uh, pivot pin, which is this big brass pin you see right here. There is a sleeve, a brass sleeve, that goes in this hole. Um, unfortunately, it, it, this really uh, out of shape and is, you know, you can see the edge is all cracked and uh, broken. So I'm gonna have to order a new sleeve, but these sleeves rest inside. The pen it goes through, and that's what the center board is gonna to pivot on. Now I had to order a new uh, pivot pin, which is a stainless steel one, 316 stainless. So I'll have to order a new sleeve, which will go through here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this pin to give it some protection uh, long-term. Uh, it really doesn't move, it's, it's on a wet spot, but it is pretty much just sits there. Uh, there is no, other than providing the support, which is a lateral, um, you know, it's, it's holding it from going up and down. This really doesn't move uh, any other in uh, any other direction. So there's some damage on the center board, uh, and this is a classic. Uh, they had the board down and they hit ground and they split the board. So I'm gonna dig all this out, fill it up with um, structural epoxy, and maybe put one sheet of um, shop strand and glass it, and then ferret. So we have a nice uh, kind of seal surface uh, all the way on the leading edge of this uh, center board. There's some damage here. Um, I don't know where that came from. Uh, the rest is pretty good shape. It's only here at the bottom that it's, we have the kind of the sandwich split for some reason. Uh, this is solid, uh, same as the rudder. This is uh, all fiberglass. There is no foam inside of this uh, center board. So that's uh, gonna give you the, a little bit higher view. That's the whole board. So today I have my beautiful wife helping me out. Uh, she doesn't like to be on the camera, so. I
La cinta de medir está todo bien el carro. Ok, so we sanded all the old paint uh, and it's kind of interesting. Let me show you a couple things about. Okay, I don't know if you can see it there, but um, I guess the way they added, or the, the way they added weight to the board is by putting, um, looks like uh, metal beads or metal balls or maybe little rods that they had weaved inside of this thing. So we had to grind this thing down because it was damaged right there. And you can see the metal pieces in there. So that adds a lot of weight uh, to the board when they, uh, I guess, put it all together. So we, we grinded, uh, not grinded, but sanded everything out. Uh, some places the paint was stuck pretty hard, so it took the gel coat with it, um, which is fine. We'll, we're just gonna fare it up and um, paint it with uh, an epoxy sealant, which is gonna take care of um, any exposed uh, fiberglass. It'll seal uh, all that. The other thing we did here is that's where the pivot pin goes. So I use a, a drill um, with a small sander and stuck it in there and work my way around inside of the fiberglass uh, shell to basically clean it up, bore it out as much as I could. And um, I'm going to fill it up, clean it, and then fill it up with epoxy and then drill it again and then epoxy and the bushing that goes in here where the pivot pin's gonna go through. So let's get in there. So I'm gonna take some measurements. All right, so the measurements of the leading edge The longest point is 59 inches and that doesn't take into account the curvature but it's 59 inches to the longest point there from the step on the pennant about 37 and an eighth the top of the head is roughly 14 and a quarter uh, across from where the, the pennant goes is about 19 and a half inches right below the head of the center board it's about 21 and 3 eighths And is pretty consistent. I mean, we've been grinding at it and sanding. So it's about 28 and 3 eighths uh, throughout on the white part. The thickness of the head is 2 and an eighth. And um, that's pretty consistent throughout this portion, which is the, the head of the uh, center board. And then here is kind of a curvature. So it's curves forward, but it's wider on the front. That is in the back is kind of hard. I mean, on the table, I guess if I'm gonna measure the height or the, the width, It's about two and an eighth inches thick um, on the thickest portion. The leading edge is about five eighths of an inch. And the back edge is about three eighths of an inch. So those are the, the measurements. 
gonna flip it over. It's a heavy board. So you can see kind of both sides of the board. I have to get a Dremel and clean up there. Okay, you see a hole here and a hole here. Uh, there's a matching hole on the keel. My guess is at one point, um, you know, somebody pinned the centerboard up. Uh, so nobody wanted to put it down. So they just pin it up. They just put a rod uh, right through there, uh, through the keel, and that keeps the board um, in place. But I'm going to drill those and fill them up with epoxy. And uh, just to make sure we have no uh, water intrusion or, you know, minimal water intrusion uh, into the center board. But it's solid. It's not the laminating. Um, it's structurally sound. It just have uh, a lot of dings that we have to fix. So we have to take the board over to uh, Tim Smith's uh, shop to get it fixed. Uh, Tim uh, had to work on it. It was a pretty heavy board. Uh, so he re glassed the leading edge of the board. Uh, we also have to come up with a new design for the bushing for the pivot point, for the pivot pin. Uh, so we came up with a flange version that we can screw it on the board, and that helps with the alignment and it also helps uh, from the, keep the pivot pin from coming loose. The, every edge of the board was resealed to turn it into a one piece. Um, center board instead of having the two pieces sandwich with the uh, the the line in the middle and then we fair the whole thing up um, to reseal it uh, put gel code back on the board and now we have one solid board that is fully uh, fixed uh, repaired and ready for um, barrier coat and bottom paint hey guys Jose with uh, sailing vessel rubbery uh, it's been a while since I do an update, so I'm taking advantage and getting one done now. Uh, the boat is up on the sling. Um, we're getting the centerboard uh, put in, which was one of the remaining big projects to get done. Uh, Tim Smith Marine Services here in Sarasota has been a great help helping me accelerate getting the rubbery back in the water. Uh, so thank you, Tim, Andy, and Dennis for all your help. Um, they've been uh, phenomenal to work with. So um, since the boat is up on the sling and it's a little easier to show things, I'm going to take advantage and give you a, a little closer look at what's been going on here. Okay, so what you see here in the keel is that uh, pivot pin that we had made for the centerboard. And this is held in place with uh, two lag bolts and then we have a new um, cover plate that's, that's gonna go there and then that'll get glass over uh, to enclose the space <coughs> on the keel we also have two holes there's two holes here and here are there in order to pin the board up. If you see there's matching holes on the center board right here and down below. Right there. And that is if for some reason you lose your pennant, which is the attachment point that you use to swing your board up and down. This attachment point where that you use to swing your board up and down. If this fails the board would stay down. And the only way to get it back up would be to um, use winches or lines or boards, uh, bring it back up and then pin it so it'll stay up in place. So we have this all put together. Let me show you the other side of the keel on the center board. So that's the other side. That gets another uh, face plate, the support side, bolted on, and then that's 100% uh, done. So this time, instead of going with uh, wire, we're going with Dyneema or Amsteel. Uh, 
we had to replace the uh, the piping inside um, with stainless steel because the bronze piping was also affected by low level current so we had to replace that as well so since we had all new piping we went with the uh, Dyneema line and that should last way longer than I'm going to be around. So on the inside of the boat we have the winch for the centerboard. Uh, there's several components, this is one of them. And if you notice it's a two, um, two wheel system or two, two winch system. So one side, which is this, this side right here, has the uh, Dyneema line that goes to the centerboard and is fed through a pipe that goes underneath this winch. The other one connects to the cockpit line that we use to control the centerboard, uh, I guess the centerboard going down or the angle depending on how we're sailing that day. So here in the cockpit, we have a block down here and that's where the line comes out from the winch and you tie it up to this cleat and you notice that there's marks on the line like we have here to let us know when the the, the keel is um, all the way down uh, partially down or maybe a quarter of the way down and we use that to improve the performance when we're sailing and that way we know how much board we have down at any given time um, so that's how we control it from the cockpit is actually surprisingly easy to uh, bring the board up or down. Um, the, the winch system, the way it's set up uh, with the blocks, it really makes it um, very manageable. Um, it, you know, even taking into account the weight of the board. Underneath, um, you notice that's where the winch attaches. Uh, you see the pipe going down. This is stainless steel pipe, we replaced it. Then it goes to a block uh, that's encased because there's water inside that pipe. Um, luckily, those the shifts and the, this boxes, this block boxes were actually in really good shape. So we had to do is clean them up and paint them uh, to get them back on the boat. The pipe you see here is all stainless steel. And inside that pipe, there is a Dyneema line running. That line goes underneath the sole, uh, into the bilge, and then out into the centerboard. So let me take the panels out so you can see that. Okay, so this is the, fill, the first bilge compartment. So you see the pipe coming from aft, from the cockpit, through this compartment, into the next bilge. The, the water you see here, um, we had one leak which was on that uh, joint right there, right before the block. So the guys had to uh, loosen it up to uh, reseal it um, with the boat in the water. So of course we got a little bit of water um, on belch, which I'm going to pump out. In a, um, the boat was actually completely dry until we have to um, reset that joint. So let me show you the last section of the, of the pipe. All right, so here you see the final exit point. Um, that block and shift were also in good shape. Uh, so we had both of those um, repair and, you know, cleaned up and repainted and mounted back on. So um, one thing I need to do is get the water out of the bilge. I mean, it wasn't leaking before, but with them messing with the, you know, it's kind of one of these knots that they put on the other side to the final attachment. Don't know if with the movement, maybe this started leaking, uh, but there shouldn't be any water um, on the bilge. So I'm going to check things out and, um, and empty the bilge and confirm that I have no new leaks but that's the whole system for the centerboard and um, so far so good all right that's the full uh, report on the rebuild of the centerboard for reverie uh, if you have any questions please feel free to post them on the on the youtube channel and i'll respond and um, other than that i got the uh, ac running here on the boat 
and I'm gonna leave it running today. I'm doing a, a long test run and make sure that everything is working right on that side. So with that folks, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe uh, if you like the videos and uh, uh,